Good morning, Grace Toady, and you others from around the country and Europe and the States, welcome back. Last time I spoke to you about the Bible being God's agent of change in your life. It is the sword that the Holy Spirit uses to cut out infection and bring healing. So how do I study the Bible? How do I make His Word mine? Four basic ideas, prayer, observation, interpretation, and application. We'll take them one at a time. Prayer, Father, you wrote the Bible. I ask that your spirit open my eyes as I study it. Observation, what do I see in the book, in the chapter, the passage, the verse? What does that word mean? What do I notice about it? Interpretation, what did the author intend to communicate to his audience back when he wrote it? And then application, how should my life change? Well, I know more, but I need to be more. I need to be more like Christ. Now, I'll deal with only prayer and the several steps of observation this morning. So number one, you begin with prayer. Pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance before you approach His Scripture. My verse to look at quickly this morning, if you have a Bible on you, is Psalm 119, verse 18. And it says this, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Now, Paul really expanded on this idea of open my eyes. He wrote this, but it is, to, it is to us that God reveals these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's Spirit, so we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. But people who aren't spiritually alive cannot grasp these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritually alive can understand what the Spirit means. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The same Holy Spirit that helped the old prophets write the Scriptures now lives inside of you. And if you ask, He will help you. He will open your eyes to understand really well what He helped to write. So there you are in your chair at your desk. Begin by asking for His help for him to open the eyes of your understanding, to enlighten the eyes of your heart as you look into his word. Number two, choose a book. No, choose, choose one of the smaller New Testament letters like Colossians or James. Don't kill yourself with Hebrews or Romans or Matthew. Please begin small first. Number three, read the book in one sitting. Simply read through the book. Best if out loud to get the feel and the flow of the book. You can do this. So I, I just took out my cell phone here and read Colossians out loud in about 11 minutes and 14 seconds. It's just over 1,900 words. And I read James in 13 minutes and 25 seconds. So just a little longer, about 2,300 words. And you can always download the most downloaded Bible app in the world. The U version of the Bible has 420 million downloads now with users logging 2 billion highlights, notes, and bookmarks. It has the Bible in 1,426 languages. And in many languages, you can simply listen to the audio. So maybe that's your, your clue here. The ESV and the, the NASB have audio versions. So just play it. Number four, make initial observations. Later, we will stress that a proper interpretation comes from knowing the larger context of the verse or passage that you're reading. If your son comes to the supper table looking sad and says, I got killed four times today, or your daughter says, I built a roller coaster today and got 35 gold coins, you need to know the context, right? The Bible is not a box of chocolates. So be very careful of seeing a verse like a chocolate and saying, Oh, I will take that one as my sweetie for today. Some Christians and some fabulous pastors use the Bible as a self-help positive thinking manual. God is all about you and helping you reach your dreams. You got this. Oprah said years ago that Christianity and Hinduism were very similar. Hindus believe that we're all emanations of God and David in the Psalms said, be still and know that I am God. Yeah. So 
huge theological error comes from taking verses out of context. Cults often begin when their leaders take Bible verses out of context. Context is king. Now, you may get angry at Oprah and the cultists, but how many Christian bookstores have mugs and paintings with Jeremiah 29 11? For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. What is the context? The end of Judah's 70-year Babylonian captivity. Can we use those verses? <laughs> That's for tomorrow's devotional. Correct interpretation begins with observation of the context. Honor God, would you please, by taking a bit of time in his word. Normally Christians don't do this unless uh, they've got to teach something. But having said that, you know, some pastors still don't do the work in observation and interpretation. They just go onto YouTube or sermonaudio.com, listen to a message, and then re-preach what they've heard. I know of a pastor in the States who grew his church to 600 people preaching just like John MacArthur. But it turned out that it wasn't just like MacArthur, it was MacArthur. He had downloaded John's sermon text for years and preached MacArthur's sermons. But that's not you, I am sure. You can do this well, and you can also have some fun with it. So, observation. Get a piece of paper or open a document on your computer. You've just read the book all the way through. Now, jot down your initial impressions. What do I see? Are there words or phrases I see repeated? What is he thankful for? Is he writing about some kind of trouble? Can I list the things he doesn't like? What are the things he likes or encourages me to do? Just take the notes, make some notes. Now, maybe in your next devotional time, read the book again and look at the section divisions, the, the headings in the big bold print. If you're reading the ESV, you can see why the ESV translators chose their headings. Look at them, evaluate. Do they sum up what is actually in that section? Would you say it differently? Within each section, verses are then clumped into little paragraphs. Look at this screenshot of James chapter 1. You see the verses 2, 3, and 4 are lumped into one paragraph, and then verses 5, 6, 7, and 8 are in another paragraph. Well, those are the two paragraphs I spoke about a couple weeks ago in two of these devotionals. I took one paragraph at a time. So on your paper, try to summarize in your own words each paragraph in one sentence. This will take some time, but here is where you really find the gold. Because when you process and summarize, that's when you're really learning. Your brain, guided by God's Spirit, is drawing out God's truth. If you want to have some fun, push yourself to summarize the paragraph in five words or less. Could you print it on a t-shirt? <laughs> Here's another cool idea that Mike Karen and our daughter Ellie are doing right now. They're beginning to work through Isaiah together. Whoa, I know, huge book. But Karen copy-pasted the first couple of chapters into a Word document, as you can see here, and set the right margin in a little to make space for notes. <clears throat> then she is highlighting things, making notes, and they're drawing pictures that describe what Isaiah is talking about in the passage. Isn't that cool? Here again, this forces your brain to search for the meaning in the passage. It's not just so many words flying by. When you summarize or draw pictures, you're forcing your brain to process and gain understanding. Now for me, when I prepare a sermon or a message, I usually create a PowerPoint while I'm working. That's not just for you, it's more for me. When I draw diagrams and insert pictures and have to summarize a passage into a few words on the screen, I get a fuller understanding of that passage. It helps me a lot. And if I can think more clearly about it, then I can communicate it to you more clearly. The last step in observation is called integration. You look back over your notes and paragraph summaries and then <laughs> summarize the entire passage or chapter one in one big sentence, which you'd call the big idea. Say, hey, what's the big idea? Well, now you'll be able to answer. So that's, that's it for today. The world is falling apart, people, in God's plan. 
His word and his character are the rocks on which we stand when all other ground gives way. I don't want to cheat myself. I want to take the time today and make his word mine. Keep well.